Welcome. Glad to have a nice audience with us tonight, and uh, we'll get right into business. But first, I would like to ask uh, Isaiah uh, Gaspar San Juan to come up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item would be the approval of the agenda. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Motion carries. Mayor Matheny, I'm sorry, we needed to amend the agenda to pull an item off consent. Under consent when yes, we get sir. to it. We're okay. Not, we're not, well, you're right. We should do it under the approval. I'm yes, sorry. Please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, back Backstroke. Uh, I was thinking we would amend this, pull it later. Uh, under the consent agenda, we need to pull item C. Uh, it's the acceptance of roadway and storm drainage infrastructure at Weaver's Pond. Uh, City of Raleigh is not ready yet on that. So we'll just go ahead and say, is there a motion to pull that from the consent? So moved. Second. Second. Other comments? All in favor? Say aye. Thank you. Okay. Now we'll get back on track here. Each month at, at this first meeting, we uh, recognize a student and a teacher from one of our public schools, and uh, tonight is our first meeting of the month, so we have that to do, and it's my pleasure always to do so. So I'm going to step over here to the podium first. Our, our first recipient, and uh, I will say that this is from the uh, uh, Zebulon Gifted and Talented uh, uh, Middle School. Our first recipient is a student, Isaiah Gaspar Samuan. Did I get that right? Okay, thank you. Isaiah is a student that is most deserving of this honor. I've seen him blossom from a shy sixth grader to a thriving, involved eighth grader. Isaiah, Isaiah is an A student that loves to give back. He serves as a student ambassador and he is president of the National Junior Honor Society. Isaiah has also been a member of the Zebulon Middle School Band for three years, has many interests and talents, but one of his favorite things to do is to volunteer with senior citizens at the Oliver House Nursing Home. When he's there, he will play the piano or other forms of music, board games, or sometimes he just spends time listening to the residents. When asked the question, how would you like to be remembered? He answers by saying, I take my role as a student leader seriously and do my best when it comes to making tough decisions that I know will benefit others. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we recognize you today and thank you. <clears throat> the teacher also from uh, the middle school is uh, Lindsay Fouché, and uh, she is a gifted and talented magnet middle school teacher spotlight uh, in the spotlight for January. Miss Fouché began her tenure, and by the way, where is she? <laughs> <laughs> Have to show you all, you know. <laughs> Due to her hard work and leadership, she is now the lead coordinating teacher for the beginning teacher program at Zebulon Middle School. In this position, she mentors teachers within their first three years of teaching, creates professional development to assist in the growth of teaching, serves as a liaison between administration and the BTs, as well as cultivates a culture and climate within the beginning teacher program, where faculty feel nurtured and supported. Her position is vital to the goals of Zebulon Middle School as she helps to increase teacher capacity and therefore having a positive impact on student academic achievement. 
She is also the visual arts teacher for Zebulon Middle School and an avid participant and cheerleader for our magnet theme, which is gifted and talented. In her classroom, students take classes like screen printing, making. Every time you walk in her classroom, you see students thinking critically uh, and collaborating, being creative, and communicating effectively. She has uh, breathed new life into the arts department and continues to be a star in the East. So thank you. The next item we have is a public hearing regarding Autumn Lakes annexation. Um, first, I will call for a staff report, and then I'll ask if anyone wishes to speak in favor, and then if anyone wishes to speak against, and then um, we will close the public hearing and take action later in the meeting. So, Julie? Good evening, Mayor and members of the board and a plethora of community members. Thank you for showing up tonight. So tonight, this is the third parcel. We've annexed the first two parcels for Autumn Lakes. So this is the third parcel in the series for this special use permit for Autumn Lakes. It is the 1225 Old Bun Road parcel. The plan case file is 2018-02. The ordinance number is 2018-19. And here you see the parcel in question. These were the two parcels that were annexed back in November. And then tonight we're bringing in this parcel here with a little bit across Old Bun Road. So the application was submitted by David Hensley and Autumn Lakes and Bowler Engineering. The current zoning is R13 SUD, which is residential. The current land use is vacant. The acreage is 58, it is contiguous, and then you have the parcel number. For the comprehensive plan, the area is defined as medium density residential, which is about three to four units per acre. Based on a four dwelling units per acre request at 58 acres estimates to 232 dwelling units at 2.62 persons per household, that equals to about 608 people that could potentially live in this area. The transportation plan shows a two-lane curb and gutter road with wide lanes and sidewalks on both sides of the roadway and a two-lane road with wide paved shoulders from Shepherd School Road to Carriol Court and from Carriol Court on into the planning jurisdiction. The special use 2017-02 does have conditions relating to transportation improvements and fee and lose for the turn lanes at the intersections of 97 and Old Bun Road, and Old Bun Road and Shepherd School Road. An additional right of way will be dedicated along Old Bun Road to increase the right of way width to a minimum uh, of 100 feet along the development. For the bicycle and pedestrian and greenway master plan, corridor two will cross <coughs> the northern parcel boundary line. It is um, part of the special use conditions that it has construction time. <coughs> for the trailhead connections of the subdivision. For the Parks and Recreation Master Plan, we don't currently have a master plan for Parks and Recreation. However, Recreation was a part of the special use and conditions in the special use permit. Water and sewer allocation was granted as part of the special use permit for 264,000 gallons per day. And we are asking that allocation be handled at the time of final plats for up to 200 dwelling units per final plat. For the fiscal analysis that's in your packet is attachment number seven. We did an approximate cost benefit analysis and it is positive. And a more definitive and accurate reflection of the cost and revenue can only occur once the site is fully developed. Capital costs and property tax revenues dedicated towards the capital costs are not shown in the analysis. For the request, the notice of public hearing was mailed to all property owners within 150 feet. The site was posted with public hearing signs. Notice of public hearing was properly advertised in the Eastern Wake News and now the News and Observer. And then uh, the board had directed the clerk to investigate <coughs> sufficiency on October 2nd. Sufficiency was met on November 5th, oh, sorry, November 15th. 
and are requesting annexation is uh, going to be effective immediately and the requested board action tonight is a motion to annex the proposed area effective immediately and staff recommendation is to approve the ordinance 2018-19. Thank you. Questions from the board? Thank you, Judy. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Okay, we'll close the public hearing then, and uh, it comes up later on our agenda. Uh, the next uh, item is the public comment period, and uh, each month we allow five speakers to come in and have three minutes each uh, to, uh, to just open mic to uh, speak to the board. And I apologize the fact we actually had seven and, had, and two were not eligible to speak tonight. You would have first option at next meeting if you so desire. But um, anyway, we'll work through those five. The first is uh, Linda Johnson. Mr. Mayor, members of the board, I've been asked to be the speaker tonight <coughs> to share the opinion of many of our citizens and briefly share our thoughts on why the Little River Dam should be repaired. We appreciate your time. It's my understanding that you have in front of you the recommending, recommendation by staff that the dam should not be repaired. Further, it's my understanding that FEMA funds will pay 75% and the state 25%. The staff recommendation gives you many reasons for not rebuilding the dam and to use the money for other improvements to the park. We don't disagree that improvements are needed to the park, but why can't we do both? We have only one chance to use FEMA funds to rebuild the dam. If we accept their money for other uses, we can never go back and the dam will never be reestablished. There are those that will tell you that the only reason to rebuild the dam is for historical and cultural ideals. What is more important than remembering the past and honoring those that have helped make Zebulon the town that we love today? We have so few iconic structures in this town. We're standing in the building that's one of them. And while the dam stood, that was the second one. We have the memories from childhood with the water cascading over the dam. And this is significant and sets our town apart from many others. While we as what we as citizens have not heard is what efforts have been made to secure grant dollars for the trails and greenways, while at the same time making the dam the focal point of the park. What we have not heard is why we cannot do both. In our outreach efforts, we have heard from elected officials across the county that they will be willing to work with us to help secure the grant dollars. What we have heard from other parts of the county is what a great asset the dam has been to this end of the county. At this time, I would like to recognize the people who would like to see both things done, to repair the dam and to seek money for other improvements. For those with us tonight who would like to see us do both, please stand. I think you can see, thank you so much, I think that you can see that we as citizens are proud of our heritage. We want you to know that we stand ready to help. There are many skills among these people, from grant writing to, to park planning, and the folks here are willing to help. Please support the rebuilding of the Little River Dam and explore other funding opportunities to further enhance our park. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Frank Timberlake.
Good evening. Following Mrs. Johnson's line of thinking, we know that the support for the dam is impassioned and it goes much farther than just Zebulon. I, Miss Lisa is distributing to each one of you now. Our company set up an online Facebook uh, petition and we wrote it as if you were looking at your agenda. You have choices of A, B, C, A being fix the dam, B being fix the dam for, and, and reinforce it, and C being spend the money that you seek from FEMA for alternate source. In this, in this document, you will see that we're asking you to approve option D, which is basically what Ms. Johnson just outlined, that is repairing the dam and then seeking a, a additional funding sources for that. Just so you know, we put this online petition up 8.20 p.m. on January the 5th. That was Friday. We closed it Sunday, January the 7th. That was last night at 11 p.m. We have 474 signatures. Uh, I'm not going into a great deal of detail about it, but uh, my group and the interested citizens, we've had several meetings. What we're interested in the dam being restored as the centerpiece of the park due to its historic value and number two, we'd like to see for tourism, the navigable waters restored so that you can get a kayak or a canoe and go all the way up past 64, and that's a good draw. I'll be around if y'all want to look at this. There is a summary, the second page in this. If you have a chance to glance at, glance at it, I'll be around when you discuss this and be happy to answer any questions about this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trembley. Mary Beth Carpenter. Hi there, Mayor and Commissioners. I'm speaking tonight on behalf of Brenda Holloman, President of the Wake County Historical Society. And then also on behalf of Preservation Zebulon, I'll make it brief and comprise the two comments since we had to scratch one off. Um, Dear Zebulon Town Council, regretfully, I am unable to attend the meeting this evening. I have a broken water line that is scheduled to be repaired late this afternoon. Hopefully the wise people of Zebulon will save the wonderful historic dam. It is such a historical feature enjoyed by many generations for wading, fishing, and boating. Zebulon is so fortunate to have access to the state and federal funds to preserve the dam. If the dam is not repaired and preserved, Zebulon will lose a piece of history that can never be regained. The loss of the dam will leave your lovely town with only one historic site. Thank you so much for your dedication for saving the history of Wake County. Best regards, Brenda Holloman, President, Wake County Historical Society. And then, I'm Mary Beth Carpenter. I'm Executive Director of Preservation Zebulon. We're a local nonprofit with a mission to protect preserve, and promote the historic buildings, structures, and districts around Zebulon. We are currently working with local, county, state, and national organizations to establish one or more National Register Historic Districts in Zebulon. Tonight we are here meeting in a building that is listed on the National Register of Historic Places, Wakelon School. Furthermore, Wakelon is being considered to be named a Wake County Local Historic Landmark. The history of Wakelon is on display right outside this chamber. Preservation Zebulon applauds you, Mr. Mayor and the commissioners, for the work you do in supporting this community. The town is proud. This town is excited. Tonight you have an opportunity to make dramatic and historic impacts to this town. Please continue to support your community to restore and preserve your town's rich history and iconic structures. Preservation Zebulon encourages you to vote to restore the Little River Dam. We encourage you to support landmarking this wonderful building that we are in tonight to make it a Wake County local historic landmark. We encourage you to protect, preserve, and promote Zebulon. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Faith Allen. Hi, how y'all doing tonight? 
So my name is Faith Allen. I live in the Bramer subdivision with my four children. Um, we've lived in the area about eight years and we've really, really enjoyed it. This is a wonderful small town. Now when we first moved here, the dam was still up and functioning, well, functioning in the fact that it was a dam. Um, as we've come to know the area and since the dam has been broken, we've enjoyed the park a lot more, I and my children. My daughter Olivia, who's here, um, wanted to express her opinion. Um, she says that, um, that she thinks that the dam breaking brought a whole new bunch of possibilities and a lot of places to explore. And as a homeschool family, we've used the area along with other homeschoolers in the area as educational spots. We've done all sorts of field trips and stuff there and the river allows, that, allows us to do that. We wouldn't have access to the river as it is with the rock and the little areas to go and look into these little tide pool areas without the dam being the way it is right now. There's a lot of potential for the, for the park to be more than it is. There's still the potential to kayak there. You take your kayak further up and there's a potential to go kayaking further up the river. There's a potential for a bigger play area. There's a potential to do a swimming hole, which is my son wants. Um, the dam really, I, I know there's history there and I appreciate that. I come from a small town in the mountains where there's a lot of history. But at some point in time, we have to stop looking just at the, at the past and we have to look forward to the future because this town is gonna grow so much in the next 10 years. And an, another thing I want to mention is the environmental impact of having the dam there. How does that affect the mammals and the aquatic life? Instead of having that sluggish, slow, silty water, we have an open river now that's going to attract a lot of newer animals that have been not there for a long time because of that. And I just want you to know that um, a lot of the families that I've talked to have enjoyed the, the park as it is. We still want the improvements, but we don't want the dam put back because of what it does to the park. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you. John Macon. <coughs> Mayor Matheny and uh, Town Council, uh, I'd like to start before, I, my, I'm going to go a little bit different way tonight, but before I start I want to um, say thank you and I appreciate you uh, listening to be heard tonight. Um, the reason why I'm addressing the Town Council is concerning the uh, Safety and appearance of the uh, of three of the uh, shopping centers, the strip centers that are here in Zebulon, uh, namely uh, the Compare Foods, the Carly C's, all the way down to Dollar Tree and uh, and the uh, Triangle East uh, centers. Um, I posted on Facebook on December the 21st uh, my concerns about the shopping centers and the safety and, and the appearance of the shopping centers and. Uh, I didn't believe I was going to get that much of a, um, of a, of a reaction and a response, but I greatly appreciate the, uh, including the people that are here tonight that may have seen my post, uh, I appreciate the, um, the uh, pouring out and the responses to uh, my post. Um, the shopping centers, um, they look old. Uh, they, they really need some updating. Uh, there are some lighting and some safety issues uh, that are uh, problems not only for uh, the patrons of the shopping center but also the employees that work in those shopping centers. There's, uh, there's lights that are out, there's signs that are out. Um, the uh, compare food sign has never been replaced uh, in that shopping center uh, since a storm damage took it out probably in, in excess of a, of a year ago. Um, <coughs> In all honesty, uh, if I'm a new business um, and I'm looking to go into an area like Zebulon or Window or, or uh, Nightdale, um, in all honesty, right now I'm I'm not choosing Zebulon. Uh, it just it just uh, it's uh, it just it, it has a, a negative appearance to me. It looks uh, it looks aging and it looks old and it needs to be refreshed. Um, I can appreciate the fact that you've got a, an initiative called Zebulon 2030, but um, right now I'm worried about Zebulon 2018. I, I love living here, um, but it needs to be, there are things that need to be fixed. 
uh, you know, you, you, you look at Zebulon 2030 and you've, and you've got a mission uh, to um, expand, but you need to be able to uh, fix the foundation before you can build the building, to use an analogy. Um, as far as accountability goes, I don't know exactly who's responsible uh, for these, uh, these fixes. Uh, I, I'm guessing it's probably uh, private property management. Um, and if that is the case, I would suggest to the town council that, uh, if, that knowing who the private property entities are, um, that you uh, suggest, I suggest that you look at imposing fines on these uh, property management companies until they get these issues fixed because they are real issues. Um, Mr. Mike, you need to go ahead and wrap up. Your okay. Uh, in, in response, uh, I, I feel like this demands a response from the, from the town council, and I would appreciate your uh, input. And I will continue to um, appear at further meetings until these items are fixed because this is a, an issue that I'm passionate about. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I appreciate all everyone that came to speak tonight. And again, the people that wanted to speak and were not able to, you have first priority for the next meeting. So just let our clerk know if, if that's what you wish. Okay, the next item then is the consent agenda. Is there a motion? I make a motion we approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? And the motion carries. Okay. Uh, planning annexation request of Autumn Lakes. <clears throat> Do you need me to go over anything again? No, I, I didn't All know right. if you had some I introduction. Don't have anything additional. Yeah. I'm just okay. up here to answer any questions that may come up during discussion. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, what we're being asked to do is uh, to uh, approval of the annexation request, which would be adoption of ordinance 2018-19. Is there such a motion? No moved. Second. Motion made and second. Other comments or discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? And the motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Okay, uh, what most of you are here for tonight, Little River Dam. Uh, the staff is asking for uh, direction from the board. Uh, Joe? Thank you, Mayor and members of the board. The discussion before the board tonight is whether the town should enter negotiations with FEMA for damage reimbursement of the Little River Dam. And if yes, what should be the use of those funds? Specifically, should the funds go to A, a repair project, B, an improvement project, or C, an alternative project. And staff is available to answer any remaining questions you may have. Okay, the floor is <coughs> open for discussion. Any comments? Um, yes. Joe, will you, will you tell us, say the improvement part, what, what is that improvement? Uh, repair is just fixing the the hole, is that right? Re repair, it, FEMA will only reimburse for the damaged sections. So okay. repair is to simply put back block in that damaged section. Um, an improvement project is to reinforce that damaged section. So to, to draw a, um, a diagram for you without having anything to draw with, it would be something like a reinforced concrete core and surrounded by the block. So from the outside, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And uh, alternative would be? Well, the alternative is uh, FEMA would give you the equivalent amount of funds that they would give for the repair project. And you could use that to um, expand the park area, improve the existing park area, um, clean up the site out there. There's a lot of debris. Uh, the, the beach area needs to clean up. Uh, you can even clean up um, and fix the edges of the dam, so to speak. Uh, <clears throat> and on alternative, would we have a, um, could we use some of that money to fix the hole in the dam with that? Well, if you mean, uh, if by fixing the hole in the dam, you mean by cleaning up the edges, uh -huh. uh, then you can do that. 
but if you're putting the hole back, then you're actually talking about one of the other two okay. projects. Okay. Yeah. The first, let me just add, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the first option is to repair it, but to go after additional monies to do the other work in the park. And that's what, you know, people have offered to help with. Now, additional money is, is the same. Grants. Grants. Okay. Right. All right. And there is a possibility, correct me again if I'm wrong, Joe, that uh, the uh, that FEMA could pay for the reinforcement. We don't know that until we negotiate with them. That's correct. Okay. Other comments or questions? Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion. Okay. Uh, 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 make a motion to enter into agreements with uh, FEMA or the uh, damage uh, with the money going to the alternate project. Okay. The I'll motion see. then is not to repair the dam. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and second. Other comments or discussion? I, I will tell you, I, excuse me, I, I will tell you, I hope you do not adopt this. Uh, I don't vote. I think people know that. Um, I think it's been pretty obvious from the from the onset that staff didn't support it, and we we disagree on that. Uh, but I think we can request total funds and repair it. Uh, we we can uh, go after grants, and uh, there are grants that are available. There are more that are going to be available. I've been assured that. Well, I say assured it. I've been been told that. Uh, and this is our last chance to uh, to rebuild this property. And even our own uh, study shows that not as many people use it now as used it before, uh, before the dam was, was down. Now, we heard from a lady tonight that, that uh, says she uses it more, but the overall numbers of the survey did not support that. Uh, it was, you know, it, it's iconic to this town. You all know I'm very passionate about it. And you've also heard overwhelming support here tonight uh, to uh, move forward with that. So that's my comments. Other comments? Well, since I made a motion on this, I need to make a comment. Uh, and I appreciate your feelings towards the dam and the history of the dam. And I appreciate the history of the dam, and I think it's an extremely important that we continue that history. If you have a history of that dam, whether we put it back or not put it back, you need to, we need to know that there is a history. Nobody knows of the history except a few people. There are ways that we can keep this dam history, the culture of the dam and everything, and create a part that I think each and every one of us will be proud of, preserve the history, that is what we need to do. But we have an opportunity to spend money from FEMA to create something that I think in the future will be very special to this community and not lose the cultural and the historical significance of the dam. If the, if the dam is replaced, in my opinion, that will be basically the end of the park. Because we have, at this time, we need more things to be done in this town. We have got issues in this town with transportation, with uh, the uh, uh, need of a fire station, and, all, and, and many, many things that we need to get in line with, and the uh, use of, of uh, fund balance in this thing, in my opinion is something that we should use to a betterment of the conditions that, that we have that need to be improved. So basically, that's my take on it. I understand your feelings, uh, and, but I believe that we can create something that will be a positive for the town of Zebulon and the historical significance of it. Thank you. Thank you, Dale. Well, we're on the opposite side of the fence. <laughs> we agree to disagree. Uh, How about you it? know, and we are. Uh, 
I, uh, I just think we're missing an excellent opportunity, and I really think that we can do, do it all. I honestly believe that we can do it all. So anyway, other comments? Well, we're ready to vote. I call for a question. Well, we've got a call for the question, so that's a motion. Is there a second on call for the question? Second. Okay, so we're, we're going to, I was fixing to call for it anyway. The <laughs> call for the question is a motion. Call and for a question to sort of call for the vote. No, sir. It well, I call for the vote then. It, you can't do it, Dale. I'm working on it. Just give me a yeah, minute. Yeah, well, I can too. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, sir. It, that, that according to Robert's Rules of Order, and actually this is a moot, moot point. I was fixing to call for the vote anyway. But if you call for the question, you cannot stop. One person cannot stop the debate. So it's a motion that has to be seconded and voted on, and then you go. I, I, re I, remove, my, uh, I remove that then. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. That's just the rules. It's okay. I remove, I remove that, but. Uh, but I'm fixing to call for the vote anyway, okay? Call for the vote. Okay. All right. I'm going to do that, but I'm just give you a little lesson there on, uh, on parliamentary procedure. So, all right. All of those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Opposed? Motion carries three to two. All right, well folks, pretty passionate. I appreciate everybody's input. Obviously I'm disappointed, but uh, thank you all for your interest and, uh, and concern. Okay, planning department. Uh, renovation of the planning department suite. Mark, just give him a minute. Let's switch in the Okay, Mark. Uh, good evening, Mayor and members of the board. Um, reason uh, uh, here tonight is to talk about uh, some of the uh, recent improvements as far as uh, the permitting process and, and some of the uh, improvements to the department that uh, are required as a result. Uh, with that, the current permitting system that we're using uh, is actually through Wake County. Uh, it was created in 1978, which is called the uh, county mainframe. Uh, there have been numerous changes uh, to it since then. I think when it was originally done, it was two pages. Uh, it has since uh, numerous pages with uh, 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 other uh, assortments to it. Um, it is an intranet network, meaning that the only users to it are the county and municipal employees. Uh, it is a paper-based system in that we rely on uh, individuals to bring the permits to us along with the plans um, that come along with it. Uh, this is the municipal uh, service areas. Uh, Zebulon currently contracts with the county on everything but fire service, uh, so building inspections, stormwater, sediment erosion control, uh, well and septics, and then uh, health and safety. Um, the system for uh, fire is a separate system through Firehouse. Uh, however, the Zebulon Fire Department will have the ability to go into this system uh, and put holds on permits or address permits as needed uh, because the county plans on uh, providing some uh, functionality as it relates to fire service within the overall system for uh, Rollswood and Wendell. Uh, the county, back in uh, 2006, uh, began conducting interviews uh, with different IT firms and companies. Uh, in 2015, uh, the county signed a 10-year agreement with uh, Tyler Technologies, uh, and that is for the InterGov permitting and inspections uh, system, kind of under their umbrella of services. Uh, in March of 2017, that's the first meeting that uh, Zebulon staff uh, hosted with the county. Uh, with the county, there were some uh, IT folks, inspections and uh, permitting, finance and environmental. Uh, from the town side, it was uh, planning and finance. 
the the county calls uh, uh, kind of their kiosk uh, for lack of better words uh, the citizen self-service portal which is uh, pretty much the ability for uh, residents citizens to uh, come and fill out permits at a computer with monitor and be able to upload any plans or, or information into the system uh, digitally in that regard there's a <coughs> couple, uh, screenshots to the system so um, these, uh, we haven't had any uh, uh, training on them as to date, but I thought I'd throw out a couple screenshots just to give you a feel for what the new uh, system will look like. This is kind of a login screen there. Um, this is, once you log in, it has a couple uh, options for staff as well as uh, citizens to kind of put some plans in. Um, and then as you fill out the permit system, it'll have more of a uh, hopefully user-friendly uh, drop-down, insert tabs, things of that nature. <clears throat> uh, again, the, the Zebulon access uh, is going to be through a kiosk. Uh, the kiosk, again, is going to be the computer monitor as well as scanning, be able to upload plans into it there. Uh, the county is providing at no cost uh, the contract and development of the system itself. Uh, as well as the annual licenses for staff uh, through each municipality uh, to use the system. Uh, they're going to purchase the computer monitor as well as any support services that come along with that. Uh, the town has to provide a uh, dedicated area for that, the power as well as internet connections, and then the uh, permitting personnel, which is uh, planning and permitting staff through the planning department. Um, and then any construction uh, that is associated with the installation of the kiosk is uh, on the town's behalf and then uh, uh, so that's kind of where uh, part of this comes into play. Um, this is the current layout of the building. Uh, we do have the conference room. This is kind of the main lobby. Uh, the bells kind of up here, the casework downstairs. So uh, we have a, a conference room, kind of a storage area, some open offices. Uh, this is the planning service area where uh, the first window here, uh, you may recall there was a second window plan both in uh, planning department and finance uh, for a second window uh, and then a couple offices in our, our plotter room there. Um, we did have uh, Devon Tolson uh, go through and kind of look at, he gave us a few different options of uh, how a, a different layout may better suit uh, given uh, the digital system that we're kind of moving to with the county but also uh, some retrofits to uh, the planning suite uh, to hopefully work uh, better efficiently and, and provide a better service to, to the community. Um, as you may see the the entrance stayed the same. This is the window where the first uh, currently is is open and that we use for permitting and processes. Uh, what uh, uh, Devon is proposing is kind of a plan intake area uh, and this is where kind of uh, we plan on having some, some shelf or counter space here uh, to accommodate the uh, computer as well as monitor and uh, give the applicant a little bit of room to kind of spread out their information as they submit the stuff and upload any plans or processes there. Um, part of uh, the, the project also uh, uh, we looked at having a contractor in here um, was to kind of open up this uh, stub, stub wall here, uh, which planning for the future uh, gives us a little bit more room for offices. Uh, currently there's kind of a stub uh, wall here. Uh, the building inspector currently reviews his plans uh, behind that wall and then we have two offices or two desks uh, here. Uh, probably another change uh, is increasing uh, the co uh, conference room area. Um, we've had a, a couple issues with trying to get the large conference room upstairs scheduling wise, uh, but it also uh, creates a little bit larger conference room for staff. Uh, also, um, you know, the amount of meetings, the type of meetings that we're having, engineers, contractors, developers um, are, are getting a little bit larger and uh, uh, what we're hoping is that putting a, uh, a smart TV or something on the wall here or projector is to try and uh, make it a little bit more user friendly and, and uh, make it to where as we're uh, having some of these development meetings uh, that we can uh, have them a little bit more efficiently and, and be able to bring up uh, aerials, utilities, plans, things of that nature. So um, all of that is uh, kind of part of the uh, plan. Um, the initial preparations again happened back in uh, November. This is the county's time frame. Uh, there is some uh, training uh, associated here, but um, the, the big deadline that uh, staff is kind of working with the county on 
is there, uh, and this may differ uh, slightly from what was in the agenda packet, I think June 11th uh, was the date in the agenda packet. Uh, the county is looking at going live uh, July 1st of this year, uh, transferring over to the new uh, uh, online kind of permitting system. So. Um, we're, we're hopeful uh, that it uh, meets that time frame, but uh, uh, again, we're working with them on it. Um, the fiscal analysis, uh, the total cost estimate, and, and again, this is uh, design, development, and construction of all the improvements within the department, uh, as well as some of the conference room uh, furniture and, and uh, improvements there. Um, there is a cost savings. Uh, from three different projects that we're showing here for capital reserve savings. Uh, those being the town hall basement project, uh, public works security system, and then the fire department alarm projects. So all three of those came in uh, around 30, no, less than $30,000. So uh, what we're requesting is, is a little more than $10,000 total for uh, us to, to make these improvements for the permitting system as well as uh, some of the other uh, improvements to the suite for efficiency sake and um, and if there's any questions I'll be happy to answer. Question? Okay the request then is to adopt uh, ordinance 2018-20. Is there a motion? <clears throat> yeah I make a motion we approve the ordinance 2018-20. Second. Second. Motion made. Second. Other comments or discussion? <laughs> All in favor? And the motion carries. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Historic landmark designation. You handling that? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, this is uh, the historic uh, kind of landmark designation for the for the building that we're sitting in here. Um, you may recall back in uh, March of last year, uh, the board adopted an interlocal agreement. This was <coughs> to rejoin uh, the Wake County Historic Preservation Program. Um, it, it does allow for designation by yourself uh, to designate a local historic landmark. Uh, it is administered by the Wake County Historic Preservation Commission. Um, and the reason I have uh, capital area preservation, capital area preservation and uh, county staff assist the uh, Preservation Commission in their efforts and provide uh, support services uh, for the commission. So uh, ultimately, uh, the decision itself, as far as the designation, uh, as the landmark uh, is uh, comes back before uh, yourself uh, for that for that adoption uh, and um, I did uh, think I'd give a little bit of history on the building I, I know a lot of uh, folks kind of know about it but I thought I'd share a little bit anyway um, it was built in 1907 uh, the first uh, school year was 1910-1911 uh, the average attendance that year was 221 uh, students. Um, the rear half of the building uh, was added in 1913 and 14, and uh, that was built to kind of match uh, the front portion of the building. Uh, by 1927, it became the largest uh, rural school in Wake County uh, with 971 students and uh, 28 teachers. Uh, it remained a school up until there were some changes with high school and elementary school. Uh, but it remained a school up until the uh, early 80s. Uh, then Glaxo purchased it, uh, did some renovations and uh, work on the interior, uh, used it for training uh, as a training center. Uh, as uh, certainly that you've heard tonight, uh, some refer to it as an iconic building and, and landmark, uh, don't disagree. Um, the the uh, citizens did approve the bond back in uh, March uh, 6th of 2007. Uh, and certainly it remains a, a historic landmark to the day. Um, <clears throat> what is looked at as far as landmark designation, uh, what makes it el eligible is does it possess historical, uh, architectural, cultural, or uh, archaeological significance? Uh, does it have uh, elements of physical integrity? <clears throat> and then uh, the application process, this is done by the uh, property owner or, or a consultant. In this case, um, the uh, Capital Area Preservation uh, and the Historic Preservation Commission uh, is going to fund the study necessary uh, to pursue it as a local historic landmark. Uh, once that is done, uh, it is submitted to Capital Area Preservation for review. Uh, the, uh, the application is then uh, sent to the uh, County Historic Preservation Commission. 
uh, where the, uh, it, it is also sent to the State Historic Preservation Office. There's a 30-day uh, review period by them. Uh, the Historic Preservation Commission holds their own public hearing to receive comments on the request and then a, a vote by the commission uh, is made at, uh, for a recommendation before uh, yourself. Uh, once it comes before you, uh, you will hold your own public hearing on it, uh, receive any recommendations, and then adopt, amend, or reject the proposal uh, or ordinance as it comes before you, uh, designating this as a uh, historic landmark. And um, if there's any questions, uh, Gary Roth with Cap Capital Area Preservation is here to help answer uh, any of those process uh, questions or, or anything else that you may have a uh, question about. But uh, that's uh, uh, staff's request uh, is to pursue it as a uh, local historic landmark and uh, hope that hope that you agree. Question from the board. Okay, uh, what's your pleasure? I guess we need a motion to tell them to proceed or not to proceed. I'll make a motion to proceed with uh, second. Ratsman. Motion made, second. Other comments or discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. All right, board comments. Dale, I'll start with you. Uh, I think I've made enough comments tonight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don? Well, I'll make the comment that I think we made a big mistake tonight. Uh, I certainly felt like that, uh, that uh, this board would realize that, uh, that Little River Dam was a significant part of Zebulon. Obviously, they did not realize that. That's all the comments that I have for tonight. I'd love to ditto what the speaker said tonight about the, about the shopping centers, uh, how dark they are at Christmas time. The Dollar Tree, where the Dollar Tree is, was pitch dark and want a light shining anywhere. And if you ride up, I, I don't know who, a Mark, would you, you and Julie, about the lighting in the shopping centers, it's too dark. I, I, I know everybody in here knows it, but uh, ditto on what, what the speaker said tonight about it, it's just. It's maybe not maybe safe. you can bring us a report to the next meeting. Yeah. We can, we can look into it and, and okay. bring your comments back. Let us know what options we have. Okay? We'll do. Thank you. Beverly? I'll tell you. We'll have it there. Okay. Well, I'll just Oops. echo again. I'm, I'm really disappointed uh, in the action of the board tonight. You win some, you lose some, but um, I am extremely disappointed. Uh, having said that, uh, Joe. Just a few public service announcements. Uh, just a reminder that youth baseball, softball, and t-ball registration is underway uh, through this month. Uh, you can do it the old school way, come to Town Hall or the Zebulon Community Center, or we also have online registration available. Uh, this Friday is our monthly family movie night at the Community Center, and this uh, month's movie is Sing, and it begins at 7 p.m. Uh, just a reminder, town offices are closed next Monday in, in observance of Martin Luther King holiday. And um, in recognition of the great turnout we had tonight, I just wanted to make the audience aware of our next work session is Wednesday, January 24th at 7 o'clock in this room. And we'll be discussing the North Arundel Widening Project. And that's it. Okay, I appreciate it. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion that we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. We're adjourned.